everyone. Very good afternoon to all of you. Okay, thank you for joining our webinar for today. So our topic for today is Health Myth, Healthy Diet Plan. So uh, the webinar will be start at 4 p.m. and we expect to end by 5 p.m. So before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Wisman. I'm from Utah Division of Program Promotion. Yeah, and uh, I would like to also uh, introduce our speaker for today before we start. Yeah, because I'm not a speaker, I'm just a moderator. I'm going to introduce you a little bit of our speaker before we proceed to our topic. Okay. All right. So our speaker for today will be Dr. Andrea. So a little bit on her background. So Dr. Andrea uh, graduated from Kastuba Medical College, Mangalore, India in 1996. She has returned to Malaysia after completing a year of internship training in India. She subsequently served in uh, various disciplines in the Ministry of Health, including general surgery, general medicine, orthopedic, ONG, and psychiatry prior to specializing in general surgery from University Kebangsaan, Malaysia. Okay, after completing her master degree in general surgery, she continued to develop her surgical skill in minimally invasive surgery and obtained a fellowship in laparoscopic surgery in Coimbatore, India in 2007. She pursued her interest in weight management and completed her fellowship in metabolic and bariatric surgery training from Ida Hospital in Koshu, Taiwan in 2012. On her return to the home country, she commenced the Andrea Bariatric Surgery Clinic and concentrated her work on bariatric and metabolic surgery. Over the years, she has helped many individuals achieve and sustain their ideal way through bariatric surgery and also helping those with metabolic disease to gain back their health. She has presented papers related to the field of metabolic and bariatric surgery. Her work is focused mainly on improving and advancing the efficiency and methods of bariatric and metabolic surgery. Her paper, Predators of Remission or T2DM after laparoscopic 2NY gastric bypass, has won the top 10 paper during the obesity week in 2013, and the similar paper also has, list, has listed in the finalist of John Harbison Award. Another paper, do, do, do you know Jujinostomy? with sleeve gastrectomy versus who and why gastric bypass in type 2 diabetes mellitus patients has won a distinction poster in Obesity Week 2013. She believes in improving herself and collaborate with other colleagues in the industry. She has been invited to many international bariatric and metabolic surgery conference as a speaker and faculty. She is a member of Malaysian Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery Society, the Obesity Society, American Society of Metabolic and Surgery and the International Federation for the Surgery of Obesity and Metabolic Disorders. She is the first surgeon to perform pediatric bariatric surgery in Malaysia for the obese child. Dr. Andrea is also a clinical assistant professor of Utah from Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences, Sungai Long Campus, and a visiting consultant bariatric and metabolic surgeon surgeon for the Ministry of Defense Hospital in Malaysia. So how great our speaker for today. So uh, I don't want to waste any more. Thank you. Good afternoon everybody. Uh, first of all I would like to wish every Chinese community or those who are celebrating their Chinese New Year. Uh, happy Chinese New Year. Gong Pei Fa Choi. Sing Ming Kuai Le. Uh, let me get my slide organized and then we can get the ball rolling. So I'm sure everybody has been waiting for it. But anyway, I would like to thank Grace Man for the kind introduction of me. All right, okay, so without further ado, we want to just go straight to the topic. Um, before that, I would like to just ask. Uh, any one of you who think she or he is healthy here. And how do you rate your healthiness? Because obesity rate is at a very level in Malaysia, and in fact, it's all over the world. Uh, obesity has been declared as a disease by the uh, American um, Medical Society, and it has become a global city at the moment. 
So everybody is like worried about their weight and why is it that we are worried about it? Because let me tell you briefly, why is it that obesity is becoming so big a problem as compared to a few years ago when feminine is always a problem? This is mainly because of the bad habits and the usage of drugs, especially the antipsychotic drugs and depression drugs, which can cause uh, increase your appetite and delay in burning of your fat. And many environmental and behavioral influence, especially the social factors now. And nowadays, motor vehicle is available everywhere. We go everywhere only either by motorbike or by car. The traffic jam is very heavy. People don't like to walk. There is elevator everywhere. And about 1% of the obesity is because of the um, genetics and the pollution, the technological food abundance and the chemical in the environment that causes us to have this big issue now. Let me go through with me with a very basic um, terminology. Food, everybody talk about food, food, food. Food is actually is an edible material or substance that we consume, which helps to support our growth and maintains our body. And diet is the food that we take. Nutrients is the chemical substance obtained in the edible substance. And nutrition is the process by which our body utilizes food for growth and maintenance of the healthy living. Right. So basically very simple. You eat the same amount of calories and you burn the same amount of the calories, you will maintain the same weight. But a lot of people in Malaysia, especially they come to me, doctor, I don't want to do the calorie counts. I'm very sorry to inform you that calorie counts is part of the puzzle of the weight loss management. So if you do not want to do a calorie count at the end of the day when you lost the weight, you will gain it back and it's even worse. Okay? So calorie in, calorie out. If you eat more, you burn less, less physical activity, you will gain weight. And how to lose weight? Very simple exercise more and eat less. No, it's not like that. We have to be balanced, okay? So, our food mainly consists of the micronutrient and the macronutrient. Micronutrient is the main part of our food. And macronutrient is what we require in a small quantity in order to uh, for our body to function properly and for our body to able to extract the nutrients from our food. Right. So look at the main part of our food, carbohydrate, which is providing about 50 to 60% of our total calories in a balanced diet and contribute about 60 to 80% of the total energy intake. And its function is mainly energy production in our body. One uh, gram of the carbohydrate gives us four kilocalorie of energy. Yeah. And it convert into a fat if we have eaten the carbohydrate in excess. Protein, protein is the contribute to about seven to fifteen percent of our total energy intake per day. And it's a building material for body parts. Function is building blocks of the cells, tissues, regular uh, our hemoglobin, formation of enzymes, hormones, and antibodies, so that our body can function in a proper way and we can utilize the material that we eat, convert into a bad or good, depending on what we eat. Right? So, another one is fat. Everybody was thinking, oh, I want to lose weight, I should reduce the fat. We shouldn't eat fat in our diet. This is wrong because your body still need the fat into you, uh, for your body to function properly, right? So it need the uh, fat to have a growth and maintaining of the integrity of your skin, maintain your body temperature and support your body organs. 
And then we look at the multi uh, micronutrients, which is vitamins. There are so many vitamins, water soluble vitamin and fat soluble vitamins. Okay, so we just require in a small amount, and the requirement is mainly depending on our age, our sex, and our health status. Okay, and its function is to help us to grow and develop mental function, digestion, antioxidants, prevention of the cancer and the anti infections, help our body immune system. Okay, so minerals is like salt, the calcium, magnesium, potassium, copper. There are multiple release of the uh, minerals in our body, you know, which is needed um, in a varying amount to be part of our body structure and to help in our physical and mental development and protect us against the infections. So coming back to a bad news during the MCO, because of the COVID, the MCO started and then there is a survey done. He said, whenever I feel, I felt like eating, I just order the food online. It's so easy, you know. So who is in the obese category? She weighed 95, 92 kilo and currently following a diet and exercise to begin to shake her excess weight. And the concern is obesity is not only increasing the rate, the risk of contracting various chronic diseases, but also put a strain on the finance of government in terms of healthcare allocation. Just imagine if more and more people getting diabetes, the healthcare system need to buy more and more of the diabetic medications to support the community. So it's a big burden to our government. Right? And then we have obtained the highest obesity rate in the Southeast Asia. You know, as per 2020, our obesity rate is 15.6%. And um, the National Health and Mobility Survey in 2019 find that meanwhile, there is 50% of the adults in Malaysia were obese or super. Uh, or overweight, 34% of 30% uh, of them were overweight, and almost 20% of them are obese. Mm -hmm. So we come back to the healthy diet. What is healthy diet? Yeah. Healthy diet is what we have to be adequate, and it should be provide uh, enough energy, nutrients like. Food carbohydrates, protein, vitamins, mineral, and fiber to support our person's health. And it needs to be balanced. That means contain the right combination of food to provide a proper balanced nutrients and provide the food in a proportion to each other and in proportions to our body needs. As per I mentioned earlier, our vitamin and minerals requirement is according to our body weight, our health status, our age, right? And the requirement of our carbohydrate and protein also accordingly the same. And it should be provide us enough energy. As per you say that I want to lose weight, but I do not want to calculate my calories. If you think on this way by eating less fat food, but you do not provide enough energy, you do not provide adequate of the balanced diet, you are losing weight. But this is what I call as unhealthy weight loss. At the end of the day, you are not losing the fat, but you are losing muscle, which is making you weak and poor body uh, uh, immunity. All right, so it should contain the right amount of the food for maintaining of a proper weight, enough energy for us to survive. And it should provide enough all the essential nutrients for our body. Maybe some of you do not know like certain uh, en enzyme and certain protein in our body that we cannot feel from our own body. We need to obtain that from our food, you know. Mm, and it should be moderation. 
whenever the diabetic patient come to me, they will tell me, doctors, uh, the doctor said, uh, I cannot eat rice. I said, no, you can eat rice. You can eat durian. But with a moderation quantity. My policy is we live in this world, we enjoy our life, we enjoy our food. And we live, we eat healthily and having a good life. And the really it should be a variety of the food and not we keep eating the same food at the same time. So you may be lack of the certain vitamins, you know, certain food only contains certain vitamins, certain uh, protein. So you have to have variable in your diet at the, so that you also don't feel bored of eating the same food, right? So our principle is get to know there is no single food provide all the nutrients required by our body. And we have to select a combination of food that delivery full contingents of nutrients for good health. Selection of the food that delivery all the essential nutrients without excessive energy intake. Choice of food intake influences our body health. Poor eating habits increase the risk of chronic diseases. So it sounds very simple, but um, you really need to have uh, awareness about it. You know, okay, la, I will eat this, I will eat that. Oh, you may think that cheese is bad, but it's not necessary. People will say chocolate is bad, but dark chocolate is good. People say, okay, prawn contain, has, consists of the high cholesterol, but only the head of the prawn consists of high cholesterol. But the cholesterol from the seafood is a good cholesterol. You know? So we have to understand it. And nowadays, everything you can Google, you can find online. But mind you, get the proper information. We can always provide you whatever information that you need about the diet, about your weight management. You know, why? We are encountered people say, I have eaten so less, but why I still cannot lose weight? So there must be something wrong. A lot of people, they come to me, when they talk to me, they want to do their weight loss. I will say, okay, after seeing me, I give them the plan. Next, you are going to meet my dietitian. What they tell me, I know everything about diet. I don't want to see your dietitian. They already blocked their mind with that, you know. So how can I help you if you come for my professional help, but you block your mind on that? Hmm? And what is our objective? Our objective is promote physical and mental growth and development of our proper human being. Building and repairing of issues and cell damage by infections or any injuries. Provide energy for our daily routines and for you to work out and protect you from any infection or any deficiency disorder. So, healthy diet helps to protect against malnutrition in our body, as well as non communicable diseases like diabetes, heart disease, stroke, hypertension, and cancer. Unhealthy diet or lack of physical exercise are the leading global risk to the health. You know, thoroughly, these are the leading cause of death in the world. Because the main cause, they did not solve the solution. The main cause is the excess fat in their body that causing them to have all these non-communicable diseases. But they only treat their diabetes, they treat their heart disease, they treat their hypertension, but your body is still exposed to the same bad internal environment. So you only do the, you are not treating the good, you are just cleaning up the surface. So why do we need food? We need food because the food, of course, gives us the uh, physiological function to help us protect our body and there is a social function uh, like 
that's the reason for us to get together, you know, people doing charity in the temple or any society by giving away some food to all and giving the birthday, marriage, celebration, that is a good reason for people to serve food and we have to put the expensive food, otherwise no face, you know. And psychologically also the food gives us a sense of comfortable, security, love, if my darling buy you a very nice, uh, buy me a very nice little, I feel so lovely and so touching, you know, I will sayang you more and you get the attention more from me. You know, and the sharing food among your friends also is a kind of friendship and introducing each other to a new food. You know, that's one of my cousins who always like to share with me where is a nice food in town and he even write about the best food in town, which hotel store, which restaurant, and he still also listen to us, you know, and food also used for the reward and punishment, especially for the children, right? The mother said, okay, you are a good girl, you are a good boy, okay, now you can go and eat ice cream, or we can go and eat McDonald's, all this function of the food. And so, uh, physiologically, we can divide the food into the energy, really nutrients, like carbohydrate, fats, and protein. They are the few food, the food that provide you maybe all the energy, you know, and they are the food who is building your body, you know, like eggs, milk. They are mainly the food uh, consists of more of the protein type of food and the protective substance like vitamins and minerals. You know? So mm -hmm. now we come back to a serious topic. Why and how we fail in addressing obesity in our country? Of cultural, social, just because we have so many myths going on with us, you know, like you should avoid all fats, as I mentioned before, if you are trying to be healthy or lose weight, and if you want the uh, daily products are fattening and unhealthy, you shouldn't eat so much, or you should go for vegetarian, it will help you to lose weight and be healthy, or you should skip your meal. Or some people think, oh, I don't, I do not need to watch my diet as I do not have weight problem. There are so many myths that go on. Even some people say, oh, diet is begin first, then tomorrow we will continue. Some people say, we will eat a gluten free food or we should eat only organic food. No, no. All this will be coming into your mind, right? So we look at the food pyramid. The food pyramid is one who organized by most of our uh, Ministry of Health in all over the world, in every country, to guide people what to eat and what is good for you. you know, unfortunately, not many people is using it. And because of the um, progression and development of the technology and the society, they have changed the old version to the new version, you know, that the, to the latest version, which in uh, they are planning to serve like more fruits and vegetables have moved down from the top here, from the second line here to the down line here. And they prefer us to serve more vegetables and the carbohydrate or the protein, you know, and the serving size has decreased you know, and um, this is the food pyramid. We emphasize that we need to drink enough water. Water is good for us, so don't forget to drink water, not only eat, 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 okay? But wash out water, we talk about uh, clear water, warm water, cold water. Not, I'm not talking about the like carbonate kind of things, you know, which consists of sugar, which can increase your weight. If you drink one can of Coca Cola per day, you will put on five kilo at the end of a year, right? So, how much food do we need? So, actually, how much food do we need? It's you know, moderation, you know, and we need to have enough calories. This is only a rough guide that I'm telling you. 
how much calories is actually the amount of the calories that you need to eat is depending on your body weight your physical activities your daily work you know your body uh, health status your age sex and uh, male or female right so this is a big plate to guide you but just imagine that is a plate so how much portion that you have to eat like more vegetable more fruits and the healthy protein and the um, whole grain will be about the same size as the uh, healthy protein right so we come into this why 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 this organize this stuff because improper diet can cause you to have poor nourish poor growth poor development poor mental and physical health i do see people who come to me they look very anxious they are in the depression they are obese so people always think that they are depressed because they are obese in a matter of fact that although you eat so much you have so much fat in your body but the truth is you are sometimes lacking of certain minerals and nutrients in our body which causing them to become anxious and then feeling sick lethargic you know they don't have enough substance for their mental to work properly and they are more prone for the infectious disease and even death. And it also can result in weight gain. And as we mentioned before, like the non-communicable disease, you will first develop insulin resistance. That is the early stage of telltale tell signs that you are going to get a diabetes in future if you don't wash out your diet get obesity if you get the obesity and then there will be multiple applications of obesity come in which i'll share with you guys later uh, so and looking at the weight and the health see they are more prone for the heart problem you know? and some people they have a sleep apnea cancer and look at the leg you know we have many people come to us, their leg develop their ulcer, cannot heal. We tell them, you need to lose weight. Yeah, they will say, let my ulcer heal first. So this is the wrong. If your weight cannot reduce, look at the color of the leg. This is because of the blood supply. Insufficient blood supply causing the deposition of the toxic around this area and the skin getting break very easily. So if you don't handle the problem, the poor blood supply is because of the leg consists of too much of fat compressed on the blood vessel. So the blood flow is poor, the toxic drainage also is poor. This is the result. So if you don't treat the main root, you keep on treating the the thing that uh, also, 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 it will heal maybe for one, two weeks, it will occur again. So that is the importance of understanding the concept and the disease. Then only you are understanding why is the diet is so important in our daily life. But when we say about diet is important, is everybody thinking that to eat is very important. Of course, it's very important. Some people say, oh, I'll go. Uh, today we skip a meal. No, 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 no. I live because I want to eat. I should enjoy my food. Yeah. Yes, we have to enjoy our food. But how do we enjoy it? Is it in a good way or in a proper way? Right? Then come back to this the problem that everybody is worried. COVID 19 and the vaccine this has been declared as our global health emergency since January 2020 last year. This problem has been with us for almost a year. We hope that the vaccine will help us to settle the problem, but we still have to be safe, which is why now we only have webinar and webinar and webinar. We can't meet with our friend, but we stay alive first at the moment. 
because of this, people get into depressed and then sheer burden, anxiety, you know, and then stay at home, you know, go for exercise, and sitting, working at home, then order food as you feel like, like what you mentioned just now. So, I shall. Adult of any age with the following condition are at risk of severe illness from the virus. Look at the links there. Except the congenital disease like sickle cell disease, Down syndrome, you know. The rest of the disease is mainly due to our diet and environmental. Like smoking, the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is the cause, is due to the smoking, you know. Chronic kidney disease, we normally don't smoke born with the chronic kidney disease. It should be like maybe most people they have diabetes, they have hypertension, they got a chronic liver disease first before they ended up with dialysis. Heart problem, diabetic cancer, you know, kidney problem, and obesity. Look at the survey done in uh, Italy hospital. They say if your BMI is a way that calculate your uh, body weight and your body height to tell you how severe is your obesity. You know, it helps us to classify the people, how bad is the obesity. For those BMI is more than 30 or above, they are significantly increased risk of severe COVID-19. While with the BMI of 35, they have a higher, dramatically increased the risk of death. So uh, it's been proven, although the study is a short period, but so many people have died because of the COVID-19. So much data to prove that the obesity is related to COVID-19. And look at our statistics. Those who have these five diseases, hypertension, diabetic, ischemic heart disease, you know, uh, and dyslipidemia, they are at a higher chance of dying from the COVID-19. And in the study by, done by Dr. Tan Pauline in September, male and those who are aged more than 60, those who are obese, with diabetic and chronic medical condition, please be there. All right? Take care of your health. Okay. And keep 87% of the COVID deaths reported in Malaysia to have at least one underlying health condition. Male and female, male mortality is higher than the female. Okay. And looking back at our Malaysia survey done in May 2000, 2000 we already under code blue, you know, what do is we are at the critical already. You know? We have like how many percent? 1.7 juta in Malaysia and three of the chronic diseases, diabetes, hypertension, and cholesterol. And 3.4 juta have at least two of the factors. You know? In Chinese, we say san kao, so it's like diabetic, hypertension, and uh, cholesterol, you know, but, and you look at this, one in five of Malaysians have diabetic. The diabetic disease will not cause you any pain. Everybody think that diabetic, uh, I just take the medications, but do you know that when you have a diabetic and you do not control the disease properly, it can cause you what we call an end organ failure. It can affect your heart, your eye, your kidney, your nerve, your, your skin. Your skin becoming patches for the nerve, you know, especially for male, they become erectile dysfunction, sexual problem. The heart, if your heart got problem, we manage to solve it, then it's a good thing. Otherwise, you may have to end it up somewhere else in the other world. You know? And that is 1% of blindness in the world is caused by diabetes. 
So why am I talking so much about that? Because I want to tell you, or I want to share with you, we have different types of fat and how they cause the harm to our body. And where are these fat come from? It's coming from unhealthy eating habit and not healthy diet. Okay. So we have the so-called superficial fat, which is the fat just underneath your skin and the abdominal. This is our muscle and there are fat is inside our abdomen. You know, we we'll always see people who have a big belly. You think because the fat is outside, you are wrong. The fat is actually accumulated inside here. Okay, so what is the abnormal fat? The abnormal fat is fat tissue directly underneath your skin, you know, and where the excess calorie cause the least problem, not affecting the functioning of other organs or clogging up the screen. So these are the fat that is not, it just make you look ugly, not so sexy. You only have a big tummy. You know, for a, a Chinese man, they will think this is a prosperity. For the woman, of course, you will feel depressed because you have this, you know. But the fat accumulating here not cause much of the problem. It can sit there for years, you know. But the fat around here, as per I mentioned just now, inside your abdomen, and it's also called a core, we serve fat, you know, it around your... This is your liver, your kidney, you know. It serves both as a mechanical and immunical, uh, immunological function. So we need certain fat to protect our organs in the body, but in excess, it can lead to all kinds of metabolic problems. So what can it cause you, you know? So which is the one, the visceral fat is the one that store within your abdominal cavity and around your organ and this is the active fat because researchers have shown that this type of fat plays an distinctive and potentially dangerous role affecting how our hormone functions in our health. You know? Look at that. Look at the fat. It's not causing us to be in a stage of chronic inflammation that means your body is not healthy at all times you know it can cause metabolic diseases as i have mentioned again and again it's also called like non-communicable disease you know and infertility in female mechanical you will have a joint pain back pain and sleep apnea you can't breathe properly when you sleep your urine problem, you cannot control your urine, or you have depression, anxiety, personality disorder, low self-esteem. One wrong diet accumulating over the time will cause you so much problem. So when you want to eat, just eat carefully. Food is important in our life. But what is good food and what is unhealthy food. Although you still can eat certain unhealthy food, but in a moderation. Okay? And this is the proven cancer that is really associated with the obesity. Right? So how look at this beautiful Nina Harun. You know? She was so keen and so um, health conscious about her health and she has gone all out to have a good diet and do a good physical exercise until he lost, she lost weight. And this is what she said. The most important thing is your good intention that you want to be healthy. Health is our life. Without the health, you have millions of dollars in the bank. Who will spend for you? Right? Look at her. She's so pretty, so elegant now. Right? So everybody can achieve what they can. If you have a good intention, like what she said. You just want to stay healthy. Right? So 
enough of diet. Just don't sit there. Just don't eat, eat, eat. But you eat well and you'll be active every day. If you say, oh, I have no time. Uh, I'm morning, I go to work. At night only, I reach home. Don't worry. Just don't sit at your desk. You know, try to walk to the nearby area in your office to look for food. That's what my cousin did. You know, he walked to look for his food. And then um, when you sit down, or sometimes get up and do a five minutes break, walk around, walk around in the office, you know, walking will help. The excess calories that make up the kilos go. So regular exercise is very important. The mm, habit is very important. My husband always used to tell me he is very good in his exercise. He maintained his body very fit. And he keep telling me consistency is very important. You just start with like five minutes walk, later on 10 minutes walk, later on 20 minutes walk, and then increase to 30 minutes walk. And if you skip one day without walking, you will feel very uneasy and uncomfortable in your whole body. So to share with you some of our patients that they have lost weight. Age is not the barrier. She's 61 years old when she come to me. Now she is already 68. You know, she has a new life. She's very happy. And this guy is from Tasmania. She has been struggling with his weight. The more he said, I tried to diet and lost weight, the more weight I put on. At the age of 28, he already had cholesterol problem, fatty liver, back pain. And his wife complaining that he snore every night. Can't sleep, disturbing her so much because he has sleep apnea. You know? So he decided, he said, my girl is very young. I need to take my health back. So we have helped him and he's living very happily now. You know? So this is my team in the operation theater. We were doing the operation with the supporting team, my well-trained nurse, you know. And this is my team that we support those who need to do weight loss you know, and have a good healthy life, healthy diet, right? So this is Dr. Saifu, my um, weight management physician. This is Dr. Erin Chang, who's a fit man who has been going for exercise and gym every day. He's our anti-aging doctors. This is our psychiatrist, Dr. Su. This is Tim, our fitness coach. This is um, Helen, our manager. Wiling is the main key people here. My dietitian. No? Um, this is Vicky, our body management and contouring consultant. This is my case manager, mm, Suri. Okay. So, we stress on our patient safety and the result. And in endobiotic surgery, we not, not only help people to do this, not only like what uh, Isman was saying, I do a lot of research on the paper and helping people diabetic and all that, but we need to cause the awareness to the society that obesity is a disease. Many people will still think, I'm only fat, you know, I got nothing. Eating is not my problem. I just eat what I do like eating. So we have want to reach out to the public by causing the awareness. We create the our society. We go on to uh, Broga Hill to see the sunrise. We go on for the boating, aerobic. You know, we have a treasure hunt and hunger game every year. And but unfortunately, last year we can't do any activities. Uh, and um, we also, I also try to give talks to as many as possible. Like you can say, I'm not only the international speaker, but as, as much as I have the opportunity, I would like to reach out to the public to create the awareness to them that you really seriously have to look into your health. 
for you to have a good quality of life. And that's all for my talk. Anybody feel free to ask questions. Please go ahead. We have 10 minutes. Okay, Dr. Andrea, so uh, everyone, so now we will open the session for question and answer Q&A. So we will open to the, to, the, to the public, I mean to everyone here, if you have any question. So this is the time for you to ask Dr. Andrea. Yeah, we are not every day to be here, so this is a good opportunity for everyone to ask question. Anyone? Can I ask a question here? I'm happy here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I think many of us have come into something that is quite popular in the market. It's just like um, people getting diet, you know, you know, SCG injection, uh, SCG diet, <laughs> SCG is my SCG, you know, so what is your view on that as a therapeutic surgeon to yourself this week? The reason is because I've been trying to explain to the patients who have a very short leave for success in doing all these things. I find it is very illogical to put your body into 500 kilocalories a day which is below your, your own basal metabolic uh, so-called calories that is needed to go on uh, today. So that uh, I do see quite a number of uh, success rates too. Yeah, but of course when you look at it, the failure is much much higher than the success rate because I find that it is not sustainable. Uh, the, the body doesn't work that way. I just want your esoteric surgeon to see you on this dietary program outside there that people can advocate without any of the uh, so-called uh, professional guidance or you know, on, on this. Can I uh, hear from you, Dr. Andrew? Thank you, Dr. Edwin. Um, okay, actually, diet, I cannot comment that the new skin or what a skin diet or keto diet. They do have their certain functions and their main thing, I think in the market, they are selling it just because they want to promote the people to buy it so that you can lose weight. If you ask me about the um, results of the diet, I can tell you, you will get the results. Any, any diet that you go in or any method that you are trying to lose weight, as a therapeutic surgeon or weight management for almost 20 years, which I have done. I see anything that you do, you will lose weight. But the next question comes is, will the weight loss sustain? Especially you look at the ketone diet, you know, it will cause you to have a body in a ketotic state. In a long term run, it's not good for your body. The new skin diet or many other diet in the market. They are only give you the powder to drink. No doubt the powders and all that, it could contain all the nutrients you may need. But the problem is they are cutting down your calories. As per I mentioned earlier, they are cutting down your calories. Your body is lack of enough calories. First thing what your body will mobilize is using the excess fat. But after a certain time, they will start using your protein. That's why you will see certain people when they go for the weight loss diet, they don't look healthy because they are losing protein rather than they are losing the fat which is causing harm to your body. Right? The second question comes is how long can you be living on this for the rest of your life with this diet? You can't, right? Uh, all my personal thought is you can only use it for a short period to boost you up for you to lose some weight and then for you to maintain it. But unfortunately, what they are using is because they cut out the calories, they never um, educate you about the diet, the importance of the diet, how. When you stop all this, you will see the weight go up in again. There is a top journal, Lancet, they have done a study in the world, those who is obese. It's only 1% of the obese people in this world that successfully weight loss 
and when came it even after one year yeah? after one year you see they don't even look beyond one year they look at one year so if you use the a skin diet new skin diet or whatever once you stop the diet you take three months to lose the five kilo once you stop the diet in two weeks you gain it back because your body is so hungry for the nutrient that you have been lacking when you are doing this diet you know you will see the result but it will make you happy because you see your kilos lost but do you know that you are actually doing more harm to your body do i answer my question dr chang uh, yes, yes. And I think I think I think when it comes to all these healthy diet topic that you know, uh, most of people don't really take it into a very serious considerations. That's the first thing, and they keep failing, and they never thought of why they keep failing or failing. So that uh, yeah, on my way sometimes I do I do treat a little bit, of course a little bit of older patient that goes for this or so to doctor and we are. Always tell them one thing that come to see me, I, I, I believe I'm not the first doctor that came to see me. And I would say that I will not give you any diet advisory or this thing or that, this and that in a day. So what I usually tell my patients, just to let it go. They ask me, what do you mean let it go? I told my patient that you've been abusing your body for the past 20 years with the food that you're not supposed to eat. I think it's time for you to learn to let it go. Let it go is the only way that the, the patient will get it right after that. Especially, uh, okay, let's, let's not move on, move into something about gluten or gluten free or healthy diet. I just tell them one thing is stop your meat, okay, and try to go on with uh, vegetarian. I mean, a pure vegetarian for about a month. Usually, you will start to feel that there's some kind of transformation in the body after a, a, a month of without meat, you can see. Basically, I find that the basic understanding is about calorie in and calorie out, but it doesn't really need to that, you can see. That's why a lot of uh, people are not only addressing about macronutrients, but very little people are addressing the micronutrients at all. When everyone thinks that come up with their own theory and this and that, of course, you know, you've got to have a success story to sell something like that over here. But uh, there's no standard of that. And of course, the people try to slim down when they achieve about three to four kilo. Wow, they're so happy, you know. They're so happy about that, you can see. But right after the four to five kilos, that's where you see the plateau. When you see the plateau, right. they get frustrated. Yeah. You can see. I see this among our doctors who be giving. Uh, you know, we are talking about obesity in, in, in obesity at, at the BMI of forty and above, or we call it, or maybe we go into something called morbid obesity. It's almost impossible to do that. I think Doctor Wei, I think. You agree that we saw a paper on that said only one percent of the population did the work. Yeah, we will achieve the optimal rate back to the, I mean the, the optimal rate that, that it requires. Only one percent could, could, could attain that. You see, this is a very important uh, so-called the important message to the to the to the medical professionals as well. You see, because they keep trying, 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 and the patients. Uh, so called comorbid you can see, you know, it's getting worse and worse and worse by days. You see, it's like you're chasing a kite to get the fellow slim down. Obviously, when I see all these cases, then I would say that my first idea is to you've got to see and go for all these things. You can see, it's not this one by, by putting anti antioxidant in your body and you know, eat lesser. But I can tell you what I can very, very frankly tell you, you know, confidently tell you, you will not go back to the optimal weight by just this, this uh, so called. Uh, this method. When you go back to all the YouTube and all these people speak now, do you realize that there's only two or two or three followers just in your face all the time? You can't see more than 300 people are talking about that. You can see, this is my view that we as a medical professionals, I think my doctor Andrew, need to help the patient to see what they need to see. It's not about the hearsay. Everything what you say, uh, Dr. Andrew say, and me, my practice is all backed by science. And so called the important peers medical journals. You see, it's not about media, it's about news, about Instagram, about social influencer. No, not at all. This is absolutely not the right way to to to, to deceive the patient who has a, a, 
comorbid illness to obesity as well as the so-called morbid obesity, you see. So some of the patients, when we look at them, they're going to tell them exactly how, how long they're going to live. You see, they don't do anything at all. I'm not here to promote or anything in surgery. Of course, we've got to move on to something, uh, additional knowledge or additional messages that uh, or additional advancement of medicine in the world. So not to be too to, to hang on on the old pages like a, like a five, six years ago. Things has changed. Medicine has changed. Geriatric has changed. I see how geriatric and metabolic surgery begins about 10 to 12 years ago and has captured the world like a storm. The reason is because it's very logical and common sense. If a surgery now to reduce the majority of the signs and symptoms of the obesity in the body, reducing the inflammation of the body, hence you get a healthier body, which allows the body have a chance to repair. You can see? So, okay, that's my view. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Dr. John. I think basically Dr. John wanted to let everybody know we should change the concept about all this. We think it's still the ultimate goal, right? Dr. John, we are trying to send the message that healthy diet is still the ultimate aim. Even whatever you do, if you stop the new thing, you go back to your original environment, you will go back to, to the same. Okay, another thing that I want to ask you is this is quite uh, so surprising to hear that we Asian discourage Asians to eat rice. For the diabetic patient? Yes, I would say that no, there's many publications in the world, mostly are boys or Western to say that, okay, you might eat rice, you have diabetes, and all these things. Yes, I guess the whole concept and the idea was really wrong from the beginning. Of all. You see, how a white low understand how the Asian, we've been eating rice for the past how many years, I can tell you easily about a thousand years, okay? But genetically, we are so adapted to it, you can see? And rice is gluten free. Instead yes. of shifting the patient to other things, I will ask my patients to stick. To, to stick to, to rice or so, but with the so called with the with, 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 with the right portions, right? Yes. It's not like eating like five or six bowls a day, it's the right portions. I think, I guess, that will give you a sufficient energy in the body, a clean energy, right? So, when we even talk about calories or sugar or, or carbohydrates, are we addressing what is so called? Uh, or sometimes a good cup. The cup in your body is a feel like the petrol that for the car to move on. You see, by putting the patient at 500 kilocalorie, I trust me, I see many of the patients look at the body at the end of the day. They are not healthy even they sleep. They are capturing the wrong concept of getting slim and beauty, but not slim and healthy. Healthy. Right. Yeah. That's why we look into the weight and the health. So it's true, like what Dr. Tan said, we have seen so many diabetic people come to us, like they have like even done it for years, I have not been eating rice, doctor. I feel so sad. So what do you eat? Bread. Bread also can, can consist carbohydrate, right? Why is the professional always want them to avoid only rice? Because they think only rice consists of carbohydrate. It's not true, right? There are so many things. The only thing is how do you educate people and make sure they know about the concept. First of all, you have to know what is diabetes? What caused you to have diabetes? You know, there must be something went wrong somewhere, except those who are a family genetic and you know, must be somewhere went wrong in your diet. You know, then only you ended up with the diabetes. But you were still thinking, okay, I just avoid cup. Do you think your diabetes will cure? But you come to me getting more and more. The doctor add more and more uh, medication to you, you know, from three to four to five, and the up. Uh, most recently we see one very young man, 43 years old, with already four oral hypoglycemic agent with the insulin, you know. But he said, I do not want any surgery for this. I'm obese. I just want the, any injections can help me to lose weight. 
Okay, at least to me, I feel a bit uh, console is because at least he wants to make some move towards his health, you know. But the problem is when we want to talk to him about our diet, he said, I know what I've been eating, doctor. The problem is you already on four medication with insulin, but your HPA wants is still 10. It's not control, is it? That's why my dietitian always been like, throwing cold water by the people, you know. But she is a very patient lady. She will just keep on talking and bugging to everybody just to share the message across. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Dr. Andrea, probably yeah. uh, one last question because time is quite jealous to us, right? Yes, okay. correct. Probably yeah. one last question because uh, uh, I hope uh, uh, Josephine is still here. Uh, she's asking, hi Dr. Andrea, I eat a lot, but the weight still can't increase. I'm 21 years old now, 180 centimeters, but only 52 kilograms. Is there any connection that because I sleep very late, around 2 to 3 a.m.? So, would you like to comment on this one, Dr. Andrea? How do you advise? Okay. Uh, what is her weight again? 52. 52, uh, 52 kilograms, 180 centimeters. 180. She is? Uh, 21 years old now. Oh, so what did she eat? <laughs> <laughs> so we, that's why we have to go through a proper uh, European diet and there is something I do not know whether people heard about the leaky gut problems and I'm sure our anti-aging doctor also can give some opinion about that. That means there is something wrong with your body, you know, or maybe your nutrition problem in your body that uh, prevent you from getting enough nutrient, you know. So you have to go through your diet, go through your history, and then we have to um, help you on that. Dr. Chuck, do you want to give any comment on that? Yeah, you know, uh, hi, hi, hi. I think in a way you're quite lucky, you know, you're not the other side of the others. <laughs> Her BMI is about 16. 16. I guess mm -hmm. also you need to check about how the hormone level, especially on the thyroid function test. Mm -hmm. Some people, uh, you will have a very high metabolic rate that whatever you eat is going back down. I guess, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe metabolism is too fast. You can treat the body by have a very small quicker meal, whether they want to cut more or not. But eat more. Uh, usually, I train the gym, they ask my, I ask my patient, uh, sorry. Diet and 
physical activities. Right. That's all for me. This one. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Andrea, as well as Dr. Edwin for, for your informative sharing. I believe everyone here gets some uh, a lot of knowledge actually to make sure that uh, we are living a healthy life after this. So uh, just a quick uh, uh one if you can see in the chat box you can see the evaluation form so we just would like to have your cooperation to fill up the evaluation form for our future uh, improvement yeah so you can spare your time and fill up and i believe you can see my slide yeah so i just would like to share we have a session tomorrow uh same time 4 to 5 pm uh on our webinar you can see my slide and sorry, I can't read this one. So I, I hope you, you guys can, can understand what it is, it is talking about. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah. Uh, last but not least, uh, if they say you would like to get in touch with us, uh, you can reach us, uh, especially for students. If you just after your examinations, you would like to find out about our programs, you can uh, feel free to visit our Facebook at Utah for You. Okay. Uh, simply uh, WhatsApp us in the mobile phones as you see on the screen, or you can WeChat us. You can also go to our website study.utah.edu.my. Now we have option for you to have a live chat with us directly from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day, you know, Monday to Sunday, except for public holiday. Yeah? And then you can also drop us an email at inquiry at utah.edu.my. All right. So with that, uh, with that again, thank you, Dr. Andrea for a very informative and knowledgeable sharing. We hope that everyone can find it useful and make sure that, uh, again, we keep ourselves healthy. So thank you very much and happy Chinese New Year to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And stay safe, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. yeah, till we meet again. Bye. Bye. You're, welcome. You're most welcome.